let's start with some background on Harley-Davidson. The firm has been around since 1903 and has seen better days and worse, but it has always come out on top. Harley has become virtually associated with American motorcycling culture due to its distinctive look and sound. As time has passed, Harley has amassed a dedicated fan base of people who identify with the brand's tough, rebellious persona. Well, Harley-Davidson has spent the past few years striving to transform into a sustainable business. Or at least, not a business whose main product is selling large, heavy motorcycles with V-twin engines to retirees. Harley's stock price rose by more than 10% today, likely due in large part to the company's sales of $1.14 billion, which was better than what analysts had predicted, according to the Wall Street Journal. The WSJ also reported that Harley's net income attributable to Harley was $42 million, which was a greater number than experts had predicted. As we closed the second year of the hardwire, Harley-Davidson produced a good conclusion to the year with solid execution of our strategy pillars, stated Harley CEO Jochen Zeitz. Livewire, Harley's electric motorbike branch that was split off into a separate company and taken public through the SPAC process last year, is struggling. For example, Harley has stated that it anticipates a loss of up to $125 million from Livewire this year. Even more shocking to me was Harley's claim that Livewire only moved 69 motorcycles in the last three months of 2022. Up to 2,000 all-electric dwelling units are targeted by 2023. Harley reported flat global sales in the fourth quarter of 2022 and sales of roughly 19,200 internal combustion engine motorcycles in North America. Total units sold in 2022 were down 12% from 2021 to 117,100. The factory closure that occurred at Harley last year was cited as a contributing factor to their problems. Another problem with the Harley brand is that it is becoming too expensive. Harley-Davidson has always been recognized as a luxury motorcycle brand, but the price of its bikes has risen to the point that they are out of reach for many potential buyers. Amid rising production costs and new rivals, Harley has forced to boost its prices, making the brand less affordable to its traditional clientele. In the recent decade, Harley prices have skyrocketed, with some models now exceeding $30,000. Many current and potential customers worry that Harley-Davidson is becoming less approachable as time goes on, in contrast to when they first became familiar with the brand as the motorcycle of the working class. The total cost of ownership might be significant, due to the cumulative price of purchasing and maintaining the system's components. Due to the high price, many potential buyers are passing on Harleys in favor of other, more wallet-friendly brands. Harley's dedicated client base is the company's lifeblood, so seeing them go away is cause for concern. Harley could lose its status as a symbol of freedom and individualism and become a luxury item for the wealthy if it doesn't find a way to make its bikes more accessible. Moreover, Customers of the popular brand have also taken issue with the company moving its production overseas. The Harley-Davidson factory's relocation was undertaken to better compete in the global market and secure the company's future. Rising production costs, stiffer competition, and falling sales were just a few of the difficulties the company was having to deal with. Harley sought methods to decrease expenses and boost productivity to deal with these difficulties. The company determined that shifting some of its production overseas would allow it to capitalize on lower labor costs and meet the rising demand for motorcycles in overseas markets. The move, however, was not without criticism. A large portion of Harley's fan base believed the company was betraying its ideals and history. Moving production overseas was perceived as a betrayal of Harley's reputation as an American firm that embraces the spirit of individualism and freedom. Concerns regarding the quality of motorcycles built overseas and the company's dedication to American workers were also raised by some enthusiasts. Harley felt that the benefits of transferring production offshore exceeded the risks, not without standing the uproar. The company could better compete in the worldwide market if it offered its products at lower prices by cutting back on production costs. The corporation also reasoned that it could better meet the rising demand for its products in international markets if it manufactured motorcycles there. Harley regarded the relocation as a chance to broaden its global presence and attract new customers, in addition to the aforementioned financial and operational benefits. The corporation might increase its presence in other markets and foster partnerships with local dealers and customers by manufacturing motorcycles there. Over time, this could boost the company's revenue and contribute to its expansion. Harley's choice to relocate production elsewhere was successful, despite the difficulties and criticisms that accompanied it. 
The business has cut production costs, improved productivity, and expanded into new markets thanks to these efforts. Company dealers and customers all over the world have praised the high quality of the bikes manufactured elsewhere. Domestically produced rivals to Harley include the Indian Motorcycle Company, which had fallen on hard times in the 20th century but has since rebounded under new management. The urban and entry-level markets are being targeted by newcomers like Royal Enfield, while brands like Ducati and Triumph have improved their appeal to youthful riders. Even though Harley's prognosis has been in the news, it's not as dire as it seems. Harley already has its hands full designing the perfect product for Europe and Asia, and the Trump damage hinders growth and profitability there. The rate and duration of the United States fall is a pressing concern. A period of such duration is nearly the length of a standard case study in business courses. Harley's decline could be gradual over several decades. The company has a 50% share of the U.S. market for motorcycles with engine displacements more than 600 cubic centimeters. It's like GM in the 1950s. Sales for the company dropped following the Eisenhower administration, but it took 59 more years to go bankrupt. As CEO Matt Levitich faces a number of challenges, he could rest well knowing that Harley is paying a yearly dividend yield of 3% to 4%, well ahead of the rate of inflation, despite the fact that shares have dropped 45% over the past five years, despite rising gains in the major stock indices. Quarterly revenues of $1 billion or more will remain a steady fixture. In the far future, everyone will be dead, but at that time, we may just be hog-riding in the Wild One region of Elon Musk's Mars-based global simulation. Instead, Levitich is working to ensure the company's continued viability by creating more compact bicycles targeted at emerging markets and younger urban riders, as well as introducing an electric bicycle, the Livewire, to the United States market for $30,000. The Harley Motor Company has been here before, when it backed the Buell brand of sport motorcycles in the 1990s and early 2000s, until finally killing the company in 2009. Even though expansion isn't crucial to Harley's success, the company can't balk at the idea of having shareholders pay a boring price for the privilege of having their money invested in it. Even if it takes until the second Ocasio-Cortez administration for the last hog to hit American roads, time is running out on that prospect. So, that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon on your way out. See you all next time.